Child sexual abuse is very commonly committed by women, but it's a taboo subject in our society. We much prefer to shout about male perverts and kiddie fiddlers, paedophiles and internet grooming. It's a comfort to us that our children are always safe in the hands of women. That's why priests come under easy fire for child abuse, for example, but never nuns, even though nuns have far greater access to children than priests. So is there such a thing as a female paedophile? Oh yes. Now, female paedophiles, there's, there's a great deal of controversy about this. In fact, when I brought up the issue that women could sexually abuse children, I was vilified. I was cast out of the sisterhood. I was no longer a good feminist because sexual abuse had to be under the guise of male power. And if I had a significant number of women who were sexually abusing children and I knew about these women, then that messed up the, the male power thing. And surely if women were going to abuse children, then they had to be doing it under the thumb of a man. A man had to be telling them to do it. They've been able to disguise their abuse, I think, more cleverly than men have. And society doesn't want to believe that there are female abusers. It's easier to think it's a nasty man. I was one really sad, sad man who rang me up who was the, he, he had um, custody of his 12-year-old daughter. And she told him that her mother had abused her. He took her to social services. It wasn't a court case, it was after the court had decided he was going to be the father. He was going to be the custodial father. Took it to social services and they accused him. They wouldn't let him leave. They threatened to take the daughter into care. He said, he wrote a letter, a, a very poignant letter, which I still have, where he said, um, if I'd been a woman walking in there and saying that my husband sexually abused my daughter, he said, I would have been given cups of tea I would have been talked to, I would have been taken seriously, but because I was a man doing this, I wasn't taken seriously. I do know, for example, at rape crisis centers, when I was trying to find places for men who had been abused by women to talk, it was okay for women who had been abused by women to call rape crisis center. They would talk to them, but they would not talk to men who had been sexually abused by women. And that hasn't changed a whole lot. There's still very few places for male adult survivors to go to get help if they've been abused by a man or a woman. One argument against even the idea of female paedophiles is that women don't have penises and so can't really do anything too serious. Women tend to use objects, uh, broom handles, bottles. One woman said that, that uh, she was sexually abused by rose stems with the thorns still on being stuck up. Um, women can be quite cruel using objects, but they're still after their own sexual gratification. So it's kind of, you know, that it's, it's just actually, it's, it, it's just a physiological thing, the difference. Women have sex with these children, but this paedophilia doesn't exist according to the NSPCC and our media. The link between those that have been abused and then go on to abuse, is that um, the same whether the victims are male or female? It does seem to be. For the, the women that I know who have sexually abused children do seem to have been abused in their childhood. I talked to one of them who said, oh, I just want to have sex with kids because sex with children is beautiful. It's non-threatening. Um, it's what happened to me when I was a child. So I think that the link of adult female abusers with abuse in their, ch in their childhood is the same as a link with adult male abusers. In other words, most of them have been abused as children in, in some really dramatic way. I'd written several books about how it was men who sexually abused and maybe only 5% of, of abusers ever would be women. And I remember a, uh, a summer radio time program, you know, in the summer, they, they're desperate for something to talk about and everybody's out of town anyway. So this one presenter rang me up and he said, come on and 
talk to me about any cases of female sexual abuse you might have. Well, at that point, I only had maybe 10 or 11 or 12, I can't remember. So I went on this program and I talked about women abusing and it opened up a floodgate. We had tons of telephone calls into the program from adults who thought they were the only ones. And then by the time I got back to my office, we had even more. And it kind of was a snowball effect. It was like when we first started talking about sexual abuse at all, when the, survive, where the adults would say, I never knew any, it happened to anybody else. I didn't know that you know, my dad or my uncle or somebody abused me. I didn't know anybody else did this. Same thing was happening with women. You know, the, it was men and women ringing, saying, I was abused by my mother, by my aunt, by a nun, by a teacher, by you know, all kinds of different people. I was shocked. You know, I don't expect women to sexually abuse. I really, really thought it was a tiny, tiny problem. At one point after a This Morning program, uh, ages ago, in, in, again in the 90s, we talked about it on, on that program, and they had a thousand phone calls. They had a thousand phone calls in one day. They couldn't, they couldn't even cope with them all. And that happened, and, I, and the reason I say that is because that was morning television from people who happened to be listening, who managed to call in. The 800 cases I've got, I'm just one person. We're not a big organization. We don't have a huge profile. These are the people who've managed to get to me. Therefore, I think that there are a lot more out there. We had a conference about this eventually in, I think, 94, maybe earlier. 400 people applied to come to this conference. It was a huge conference. But 30 people, between 20 and 30 people came, dotted themselves in the audience and tried to disrupt it. They were yelling that, you know, this, why was I paying attention to women? It wasn't women. I was taking the attention away from men. One of the women who was going to talk about her own abuse, who was now helping others, then couldn't face the audience. So you had this uproar. You had people in the audience turning on these, these women who were standing up saying, sit down, we want to hear about this. And you had them shouting and it was just, it was absolutely strange. Um, and very sad because it was like, don't tell me this information even if it's true because I don't want to hear it. And if those women who came along to our conference had had anything to do about it, nobody else would have ever talked about it. It would have just gone away. One justification used for female paedophiles is the co-offending theory. That is, they acted as a result of male coercion. Do women tend to only commit child abuse if there's a man involved as well? No, no. In over 75% of the cases, the women acted completely alone. Most times there wasn't even a man in, uh, in the premises. So, uh, you know, the, the excuse... And it's interesting about, about us as women because we're quite willing to accept that we are a superior breed and that we do everything right, um, but quite unwilling to accept that we could do anything quite as horrible as this. So it's, you know, it's, 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 it's really not us. I know there are plenty of women who, who too commit paedophilia and they get away with it because of the mother expectation, um, because of the, the image that they can use of the motherly type. So a woman can go to a schoolyard quite happily um, and watch the children go by, but if a man does, it's, there's something perverted going on there. Um, and that's how a lot of, a lot of um, older female paedophiles get away with it and continue to get away with it, and they will do, because that's, then we're letting them. The way, if we think about women and men in that way, then, then we're, we're making it easier for them to. The same brush has been used to, to paint all men, you know, watch out for men. It's a bad message for men, it's a bad message for kids, and it's an untrue message, and it's statistically not sound. Sexual abuse by women has the same foundation as that committed by men. They've generally experienced childhood abuse themselves. Women are not immune from turning into abusers, as we like to think. By pretending that female paedophiles don't exist, we have little protection from them. Yeah, w women who sexually abuse children like to have jobs where they're around children. Um, nursing, teaching, uh, daycare, things like that. You really don't think twice 
I mean, most parents don't think twice about leaving their children in care of a woman. They do now think twice about leaving their child in care of a man. Again, I think that that's wrong. But there you are. That's, that's what's happening. So they, they will find jobs where they can get in contact. It's, it's, it's like an alcoholic in a bar. You know, if, if you can possibly, if you've got an addiction, and this is an addiction, then you will go to some place that you can actually practice your addiction. And any place around kids is a good place. Women and men who have been sexually abused by their mothers are some of the most damaged people that I've ever met.